I got to think about Mary. I got to make sure I'm good. I can't be stressing out over people and things, you know, that don't matter. So, um, Mary, I'm going to try throughout this whole podcast to resist the temptation that happens a lot with you, as I noticed, especially after watching um, uh, My Life, the documentary. I watched it last night, thanks to the good folks uh, at Amazon. Um, and it was spectacular, by the way. Um, and try not to take you through every emotional moment of my life because of your music. Because <laughs> women, I, I see it all the time. They pour their heart out to you. They're like, Mary. And then when he left me and I was listening to this, and uh, which I think is, is special, um, but I often wonder because you hear these stories from women over and over again. Uh, what do you do with all that? Because people are sharing very personal things with you because everybody feels like they know you. When people tell me these stories, I listen, you know, and I, I don't know what else to do. With I listen and I just say, wow, man, you just never know what so many people are going through. And that's really it. You listen, you just... Some of the stories are like, you know, the, the album saved my life or the song stopped me from driving over a cliff or stopped me from whatever it is. And you just, you know, I, 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 I can't take credit for all that. I have to give it to God because I can't, I'm, I, I'm not that powerful. I'm just a vessel. I've been sent to do something, which is be a human being. And, and me being a human being has just helped a lot of other women in their lives because I, you know, and then I've been, you know, just not afraid to let it, let people see what it is because I didn't know how to do anything else. So, and being so vulnerable and, you know, not understanding what I was doing, I, I helped a lot of people and didn't even really know it. So I just give the glory, give it to God because I'm, I'm not powerful like that. I'm just a vessel. You, you, you see what I'm, you feel me? I know I do. I do feel you. Um, but it, it's an extraordinary connection that you, you have with women because we all can relate to you. Like every, I was watching this last night, um, watching my life, uh, which is on Amazon for those listening. And it uh, premieres, I believe, June 25th. And I implore everyone to watch it because it does take you through an emotional experience. You know, when my life dropped, it was, I was in college when that dropped. And uh, I was going through the worst heartbreak of my life. I see, I told y'all I wasn't gonna tell you all this, but oh, you know, know. Yeah. yes, I was with an ancient dude and you know, whatever. And so, uh, uh, especially then during that part where you and, and Big Bub are going through Be With You, right? And I was like, I, I felt that in my soul. I was sitting there watching it with my husband. I know he's like, why is she so emotional, right? Like, I'm like, you don't understand. So I say all that to say is that you know, even though, yes, you are a, ves a vessel, but every woman that looks at you is like, you remind me of my mother, my grandmother, my auntie, me. It's some woman. You are a version of so many Black girls and Black women's existence. And so that's a pretty powerful thing. And so you say, well, hey, I'm just a vessel. I think it's more than that. And I'm wondering if you feel that same connectivity with your fans. Of course I do. I, I feel like we are each other. You know, we, we, you know, that's, it's, it's so simple. We, we are each other. We are here having different experiences, but having the same kind of pain, you know, and it's just, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to be this for them. You know, like I can say that now, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh God, why am I going through all of this? Why is it, why, why is this so painful? I'm just, I'm, I'm just like every woman you know, on the planet. And I, I didn't know that when I was making the album, I didn't know when I was writing the album, I didn't know I was like every woman until every woman spoke and said, yes, you are, Mary, we, we bought this album, we feel your pain, we're going through the same thing, like you're saying, like you were saying. So, you know, you don't know these things till later, you know, <laughs> and while you're going through it, you just like, like you're just going through it. And then later you find out that you 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 are a vessel, you're not nothing special, just, a, you know, <laughs> Just a, just a human being having human experiences just like everyone else, crying, damn near dying over some guy, ready to kill yourself because you, you're not feeling at, you know, adequate and you're not feeling beautiful and you're not feeling whatever. You, you, you don't even know that you, you're, you're beautiful or, you know, so it's, yeah, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm, I can't, I don't even know what else to say. Except, uh, <laughs> I've just been a human being on a journey and um, 
I guess I've been, I'm, I'm here to help. I, I was sent to do what I'm doing, which is be, you know, human, be vulnerable, be exposed, be, whatever it is that I am all the time in front of the world, falling and getting back up, getting married in the wrong guy, divorce all over the television, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's, hey, I, I, I make mistakes, big mistakes. I'm not perfect. Oh man, I'm, 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 I'm the worst, <laughs> you know, when it comes to certain, you know, decisions. So yeah. And, but I'm the best at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. I, cause I've learned how to say I'm the best too, but as a human being, man, I, I get it wrong a lot. We're going to, I'm going to dive deeper into to the documentary uh, with you, but of course, leaving a lot of meat on the table so that people can see it. But I'm going to ask you something that I ask every guest on this podcast. Um, tell me about the first time you felt famous. The first time I felt famous, honestly, you're not going to believe this is when I, we was on tour and we had this bus driver who was just, you know, white, you know, red, you know, I don't wanna say, it, but you know, you know, the blue. Not, not, blue your, not, your, typi- not your typical fan. <laughs> right, it was like, and he turned, he was listening to his, his music on the, the bus and I was sitting in front of the bus and Family Affair came on the country station. And I said, "Uh oh, something happened. (laughs) Something happened if the bluegrass people are listening to my music that I realized I was famous at that point. And it took me that long to get it. It took, God had to show me (laughs) through a country music station, like, because country music is some of the biggest, you know? And I was like, wow, what is Family Affair doing on that country station? He was like, this is the biggest thing. This is the biggest thing in the world right now. I'm like, oh my God, I'm famous. <laughs> and I feel like you're the perfect person to begin this, this question with. And when would you say you finally became unbothered? I finally became sincerely unbothered. Not just, I don't give a fuck what people think. Like maybe... maybe right after my divorce, I, I, I said, this, this is the worst, like the worst of the worst has already happened. This is the worst that can happen. And now it's like, you know, I don't want to say the curse word, but you know. No, you can cuss, go ahead. <laughs> like, like, fuck everything and everybody for real. I'm, I'm like, I'm not even, whatever. Because I've had so much bad stuff happen to me when I was married and before I was married. And it all happened in front of the world. And I thugged through it like, a real, you know, head up high, people laughing, you know, friends come in, friends ended up not being friends, you know, just all types of stuff. And then I finally said, oh, fuck all of y'all, fuck everything. I got to think about Mary. I got to make sure I'm good. I can't be stressing out over people and things, you know, that don't matter. So that was like 2016 when I was just like, I really don't care. Nothing else really matters but me. I hate to sound like that, but you know, it's time and it was time for me to think about me so I could stop making the same mistakes over and over again by trying to take care of everybody else and hoping, you know, everybody was good and but leaving myself out. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was around 2016. Well, I mean, especially black women in particular, they we have a, a tendency for saving everybody and not realizing that we ourselves are drowning. Um, I made this analogy before. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be big mama and soul food. I don't know if you remember that part where she put her arm, her arm was burning on the stove and she didn't notice it because she was suffering from diabetes. I don't want to have my arm on the stove and not even know that I'm burning up. Right. And so sometimes I don't think that's a selfish decision at all to decide that it's you that needs the focus, the attention, you need to worry about you and not about everybody else. So with that being said, where you are right now, how would you describe this season of your life? Content with what I have and who I am. And, you know, of course we all want better and we all want to be better, but what, you know, just content with where it is and work with it and rock with it and make it better and, and, and embrace it. Just, just content, content. 
Um, of course, anybody who's followed your career, and I consider myself a, a day one Mary J. Blige fan, uh, we've seen you go through the ups and downs, but you put it all together in one documentary. Why did you feel like the time was now to let people in in an even more personal way? You've always done it through your music, but now we visually get to put the pieces together and really get a feel for what your life was like both in the spotlight and out of it. So why was now the time? Well, I know about, about two years ago, um, I was on tour, on the royalty tour with Nas and we was both celebrating the 25th anniversary of our albums, our iconic classic albums. And Time Magazine was celebrating my, the, you know, the, um, the 25th anniversary of the My Life album. And like um, Billboard Magazine was celebrating, everybody was celebrating it. And I was like, well, while I'm on this tour, I'm gonna celebrate the My Life album and I'm gonna uh, attach a, doc a documentary to it. I'm gonna have the cameras follow me around and talking to the fans. And I just felt like it was time because it, everybody was, it was being celebrated and it was the 25th anniversary. And so, you know, what, what comes with that is conversation and what you see in the documentary, what comes with that is just truth and what we live through. And, you know, when you, when you start talking about the process of getting to the My Life album and making the My Life album, it's, 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 it's not going to be a happy, <laughs> it's not going to be a happy, happy interview, but it's going to be a healing interview. You know, P people are going to get healed and get inspired because they see that they see you, your truth. They see you telling your truth and what you lived and how you felt. And, you know, so that's, that's, it was time, but the interviews are, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be what it is. And it's not going to be a chipper, <laughs> chipper, <laughs> chipper. It's going to be like, oh man, and, you know, I went through this on this song. I was going through this on this and this. And so, you know, yeah, it was time. It was time to, it was time for people to see how the movement was created, first of all. You know, how the fan base was, you know, the tight fan base was created. Mm -hmm. um, how often or when's the last time you listened to My Life? I listened to My Life um, maybe about, maybe three months ago. Mm -hmm. I listened to it from top to bottom, just, listen, just drinking wine and listening to it. And wow, all I can say is every time I get to be with you, I just start crying. <laughs> Cause I remember how I felt. I remember how I felt wanting that person to love me. He didn't want to, he didn't want me around. And that whole album just was begging and pleading and hoping, you know, somebody would love you. Would not knowing that I needed me to love me. If there was one track on my life that you felt like kind of really where really captured where you were emotionally and mentally at that point, um, like where you were, which song would it be? Shit, I, it, it would definitely be the it, it would be the whole album because I was it, the album is a movie. Then I was trying to even in my dark times, I was trying to have some fun somewhere, you know, sometimes. And um I, my life is probably the song that would start it from, because that starts from childhood. That's the first song I've ever heard in my life. Um, um, Roy is Everybody Loves the Sunshine. And it would, it would probably be my life. It, I can't say that. It's the whole album, the whole album. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess that was what I loved about the documentary. And I don't know why I never thought of it this way. I mean, I'd heard you say in many interviews before that, this was a pure reflection of what you were going through, but I never looked at it like a memoir. And the documentary helped me look at it like a memoir, especially the way it's broken down into the segments using the lyrics from uh, the song. And what was for you, um, and I say this speaking from the perspective of somebody who is finishing the edits on their memoir, and there were times where I was writing pages and crying at the same time, remembering things. So what was it like for you to have to relive some of this to put it in this documentary? It was heavy. I had to stop a lot. I was, I was crying a lot. Uh-oh, <laughs> scary happened. <laughs> I was crying a lot. I'm, um, it just, you don't have to think about it. It just shows up when you start talking about it. Um, I didn't know 
you know, looking at my, my siblings part of the interview, I didn't know they was going through all the stuff that they was going through or they saw things the way they saw it. I didn't know Bub was, you know, doing drugs just like me. I didn't know who, you know, it, it, it was a lot that made me, you know, sad, made me feel sad, not just for me, but for everybody else. Cause it was such a heavy time. And to hear everybody else's testimony, it was like, damn, like, you know, that this album really is important because all of us heal from it. All of us are here to tell the story. So it was, it was a lot of crying, a lot of crying, a lot of stopping, a lot of just remembering stuff like it's fresh again. Now, you know, we're only a couple years out from it, from my life being 30 years old, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm like, so what you gonna do in thirty? Then? <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna be on tour on the thirtieth. We're gonna okay. have a big big show. We're gonna have an all girls show. Everybody's gonna have their my life moment of whatever their my life moment is. Singers, testimonies, everybody. Uh, I saw some um, uh, a recent interview that you did, and you said something that was re really struck me, you said that anything that scares you, you're moving toward now. Um, what is it that still scares you? You know, every day we don't know. It, you know, we don't know what can scare us. <laughs> um, life doesn't scare me anymore. Life is life. Um, I'm gonna tell you what, 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 what does scare me, getting stuck not moving forward. That's scary. I don't ever want to be stuck. I want to keep learning, keep growing, keep pushing. Because when you get stuck, you, you finish. Yeah, I think that's reflected in all the different things that you're doing now. So you, you know, you you have an incredible line, Sun, Sun Goddess, which thank you for the case okay. of it. <laughs> I very much appreciated it. Uh, you have that. Um, uh, you have uh, you started a business venture with LL Cool J's wife, correct? Yes, we have a um, jewelry line, which I'm wearing right now. It's called yep. this, the love. This is yep. the strength. This is the strength collection. Okay. That's connected to the tattoo right here on my hands. So I got this in the 90s when I needed the strength. And um, I have that. And you have your production you company? Yep, yep, you have your production company. Our, our, our baby, um, the uh, documentary. And um, so much to come. So you are you sort of um, made a transition, not only just married the, the artist and, and songwriter, but married the entrepreneur. What is that transition for you? you know, been like to be at deep in the business world, almost like you are in the music, music industry? It's a lot of work and a lot of responsibility. That's really it. You have to really want entrepreneurship or else you will be like, I'm just going to lay down <laughs> because I can. <laughs> oh, I can't, but it's, it's just, you got to really want it. You got to really, it's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility, a lot of people you're responsible for. A lot of patience. And of course, in addition to that, the acting roles continue to come. Of course, you're playing uh, Monet on uh, Power on the spinoff. Um, but you also have wrapped uh, Respect, where you played Dinah Washington. Um, what did it mean for you? I know Aretha Franklin is somebody that you looked up to to be a part of her biopic. Um, it, I mean, it, it was it meant everything like it would mean to any female artist it, to be a part of Aretha Franklin's story and not have to play her. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but just because <yeah. laughs> I, I couldn't have never pulled that off. But just to be in her story, it, it's it's amazing. It's everything. Now, you know, one day it's going to be, uh, I pronounced it wrong the first time, it's going to be a biopic about you, Mary, one day. So the natural question is, uh, who would you want to play Mary J. Blige in your movie? I don't know yet. I still haven't seen her yet. I know y'all think y'all seen her, but I haven't. I haven't. She is, is, is so much more to Mary than blonde hair and, and, and whatever you think the Mary dances. It's so much more to her. And I have not seen her yet. Mm. Is it, because I Aretha said this before she passed, that it was important to her that somebody who can actually sing play her. 
and it's Jennifer Hudson who's playing her uh, in, in the major motion picture. Is it still, is that something that would be really important to you that you want a singer playing you? Um, yeah, that's, that's one of the things, but that's not the most important thing to the person playing me. I, I, I haven't seen her yet though. I like, I mm. have to see her and be like, oh shit, that's her. Mm. And there's things in me that, you know, how you could look at a person and be like, oh snap, like she reminds me of me. I haven't seen anybody that reminds me of me on this planet yet. Mm. And I'm not, I'm, I'm saying that like, it's honestly, it is, this, this is not, not arrogant. Just, I haven't seen anybody that I could look in their eyes or just glance at them and be like, oh shoot. That's real. Mm. Yeah. Um, you said you considered yourself a, a vessel, but nevertheless, um, I, I would be here for another two hours if I listed all the things that you've accomplished. Are you somebody, are you able to accept the flowers? It's one thing to give the flowers to people, but are you able to accept them? Now I am. Mm. Now I, now I, I yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you in a big way. Not like, yeah, yeah, I deserve it. No, thank you. I, and, I, and I do deserve it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, how did you get to that point where you really felt like I, I'm okay with people telling me I'm, I'm great and stepping into that greatness? Well, I had someone telling me that I wasn't anything. And I actually started to believe that. And once I, once I fought through all of that, I, I, I just said, you know what, I'm not going to let anybody, and, and that's a terrible feeling to feel like you're not nothing, you're fat, you're ugly, you're this, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you actually start to believe it. That's a terrible feeling. And that's the feeling I was trying to get away from when I was younger. You know, I don't want to feel like I can't or, um, you know, um, I'm ugly or, you know, you know, wh whatever those things are. So I fought and it takes a lot of courage to fight for who you are, who, who fight for your identity. So I fought for my identity. I fought for this freedom. I fought and I'm still fighting every day because there's a lot of people like, oh, she ain't this, she ain't that. Oh, fuck you. I am. I am. And I keep, and I say that with conviction because I have to keep fighting for it. I have to keep fighting for it. And, and, and it's not like, you know, it goes away. It's an ongoing process where you got to keep telling yourself that's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, you're not this. That's a lie. You know, like, yes. I, look, look around you. I am. I did it. I'm somebody. I'm, I'm more than somebody. And so once we get past what everybody has to say, you can live in it. You know, that's what it is. You know, you, you, you're worried about what this person's saying, worried about what the world's saying, worried about what social media is saying. I don't give a, excuse me. You don't give a fuck. I got you. <laughs> I really don't care what social media, this person, that person. I don't care what they think about me in the depths of me. So that's why I'm able to say thank you. Thank you. And not worry about what people, what they want me to have or how they want me to be or how they want me to feel. I feel how like I want to feel. I look how I want to look. I, thank you. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> it. Just, you just get tired of uh, feeling like, what is everybody? Fuck everybody, excuse me. I, I lost it just now. Fuck everybody and what they think. And what about you? So what the thing is, what matters, what you think about you is the only thing that matters at the end of the, end of the day. So that's why I'm able to just suck it up and, and embrace it. And, and yeah, and, 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 and um, in, in moderation, not like, you know, from a cocky, um, vain perspective from like a grateful thank you so much perspective and i'm sure that a lot of people who heard that are probably surprised because i think and this is the unfortunate part of what you do for a living is that everybody looks at the picture you present however you want to present it and i think there's probably a lot of people who are surprised that somebody as beautiful as you are as talented as you are would ever struggle with with uh self-esteem issues um, it, how long, I mean, I know your entire life has been a journey, but, um, I, when you think about the moments where you were able to kind of correct your spirit and correct that, 
you know, what are some of the moments that stand out where you finally said, hey, you know what? I am the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how did how did that process work for you? It's just a day to day, you know, just seeing who you are through the eyes of God. What does what does God how does God see me? Well, he says I'm a masterpiece. Do you believe that? You need to believe that. I need to believe that I'm a masterpiece. I need to, do, but besides the weaves and the wigs and the blonde hair and the dresses and the jewels, when I wake up in the morning, I greet myself like I love myself. I greet myself like, like I'm special, you know? And I go past the mirror and I say something to myself like, you know, hey, beautiful, or hey, something like, and that's a practice. I had to practice that. I practiced that. While I was in that horrible marriage, I practiced that, you know, when I, when I um, got the divorce, I practiced, you know, how to, and I just built, just keep building myself up. It's an ongoing everyday thing. You have to do it for yourself, not for other people. That's why you got to lose, you know, you got to lose, you know, when you, when you come home and you take off your makeup and, and, and you, you pull your hair up in a ponytail, you take off your wig or whatever, and you look at yourself, you, not your cheekbones, not your eyes. You, who are you? I'm special. I'm Mary. Who, what, what is Mary? Mary's a giver. Mary's a, a, um, a, a, a good daughter. Mary's a good friend. Whatever it is, good about yourself. Like not, oh God, I got all these bags under my eyes. Oh God, I got, I got a, like I used to do that so much and that's what kept, kept me. The more I spoke negative energy over myself, the more I felt terrible. So mm. I just X that out now. I just say, no, that's a lie. And if it's something real, I'm like, okay, I'll fix that. I'll deal with that. So I think it's the, the honesty with yourself, being honest with yourself. That's, it's hard to practice, but once you get there, you'd be like, damn, I don't never want to uh, uh, be deceived by myself again or be delusional. It's, it's the worst place to be. Um, you brought up uh, your divorce. Um, do you ever see yourself getting married again? No, not right now. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't want to say it would never happen again. But I'm saying right now, it's, it will never happen again. At right here where I'm at right now, it's not happening. <laughs> uh, is it uh, um, because you don't think you can put yourself back in that that place, or do you feel like you know what? I'm I'm good. If this is what it is, that I'm okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm all right. I'm cool. Like, I'm good. Um, I don't know. I don't understand it. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I think at some point, everybody wants somebody else. I don't care how long you're in that relationship or how much that person loves you. At some point you start having a feeling in your stomach. Yes, he's cheating. Yes, he's doing it. I just hate that feeling or some, you know, the feeling of, oh, wow, I'm not enough or gosh, I'm, you know, all of that again, I'm not ready for because I'm still healing. I'm still mm -hmm. going through the process of healing from someone that thought I wasn't enough. I wasn't whatever he needed. So to get back into something and then it won't be good for me. Is it um, generally, is it, generally speaking, is it hard for you to kind of make yourself vulnerable? To who? Um, to whoever, because uh, oh. I just in reading, you know, um, a, a lot of material coming into this, just in things that you, you've said in the in the past is that you it's hard. It's always been hard for you to trust people. So I'm wondering if is that is that something that you still see as as being a core part of, of who you are? I won't say as a problem, because I think Frankly, defense mechanisms are okay, <laughs> like to some degree to protect yourself. But uh, is it hard for you in general, would you say, to make yourself vulnerable? Um, to certain people, I, I don't like to feel like, I don't like to put the energy up like, okay, I'm going to block everything because I don't want to block something that could be beautiful as a friendship or beautiful, you know, as something that can help me heal. But I don't want to open the door for something, you know, bad to happen either. So it's it's tricky. It, it's it's tricky. Um, I'm vulnerable enough when it's time to be. 
<laughs> and then I'll close it right off. <laughs> I have to, I, that's how I gotta. I have. I have to play out here, or I have to live out here because, you know, I don't want to get myself all caught up into something and then, they on to the next. So mm-hmm. I'm vulnerable enough, and then I close up. I think that's. I think that's. That's safer right now. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not closing them out or sending them bad energy. I'm giving. You know, I'll, I'll bring, you know, I'll embrace you, you know, but then I'll cut it off too, because that's, that's what protects me. Uh, well, one place that you've never struggled to be vulnerable at is in your music, of course. Um, so uh, when can we expect some uh, new music? I know you got some stuff with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for their album that, that came out that they are uh, dropping, but uh, when can we expect a Mary project? <laughs> Soon, <laughs> soon, <laughs> ghost. <laughs> soon as I'm, I'm working on it, and as soon as I'm finished with, you know, like maybe in the middle of all of this, you know, something will come out, but it's coming. Because mm. you were working on, I was at least I'm under the understanding you were working on new music before the pandemic happened, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'm kind of ready. Um, well, with this uh, next iteration of new music that we might see, um, what do you think, uh, or what do you sense already that will be different about this than, um, you know, all the years that you've taken us through different spaces in your life? Like, what space in your life do you think this new music might represent? Just where we are, <laughs> like, you know, just as women, what, what conversations all the women are having right now? Um, <laughs> I don't even want to say it, but <laughs> the, 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 the com- like, it's basically what I was, you know, what I was saying earlier, at some point, you will not be special anymore, mm-hmm. you know, or there will be someone that, you know, or you will have, or there will be someone that, you know, makes you feel good enough to open up enough and close up enough, you know, um, and it, it, it feels good to know that you have options, you know, and, you know, if, if you decide, there you go, there he is, there, you know, whatever. So it's, 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 you know, there and it's, it's everywhere I am. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, since we were talking about the, the anniversary of my life, uh, this documentary is pegged toward this 25th, as I said, the 30s kind of around the corner when you think about it. Uh, a good friend of yours has a milestone anniversary coming up for her album, Lil' Kim, Hardcore. Uh, this year is the 25th anniversary of that. Um, when you think about Hardcore being 25 years old, and especially looking at your your good friend's growth, um, you know, what about Hardcore do you think resonated with women with with hip hop, period? I mean, the, I mean, the fact that Kim, you know, was was is one of the most amazing female MCs able to stand toe to toe with any dude out there um, rapping. But the fact that she, we related to her because she said what we was thinking. She said that, it, like, she said it real good. She she did what we was thinking about doing, wanted to do. And, you know, she she made us feel empowered just with her freedom to just be look let it rip like whoa and that gave us freedom that gave us freedom to just be like you know it's nice to think about that but we, we, we would never I don't think we have the courage like little Kim to do that you know but now you know we run around in bathing suits on social media so she did inspire us <laughs> <laughs> she did um, uh, what was your favorite track on that album um, other than crush, <laughs> <laughs> other than crush on you, crush, big mama thing, mm-hmm. queen bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, the the whole damn album was crazy. The whole I remember when I I met Kim when I was on tour, and when when we met each other, we just screamed and cried and held on to each other like we knew each other for years, but, but that's how it is. We knew each other because she is us. You know, like you asked me earlier, who am I to my fans? I am them. I'm every woman. Like, so when they see me, they hold on and tight and they tell me all these stories, 
that's that's how it was when I when I met Kim. <laughs> uh, when you um, you know you guys were you're so young, and I guess because I was a, a fan, it was hard for me. You guys seem so grown up to me, but you look now, Jay Z. You know he got three kids and married to Beyonce. Little Kim is is doing her thing and inspired an entire generation of women in hip hop. Uh, look at you with this growth and this healing. When you look at all the people you came up with, and, and unfortunately some of them are not here, um, what are you most proud of when you look at kind of the peers that you came up with? Well, uh, as far as me, myself? Um, yeah, when you look at some of the peers that you came up with from you know Jay-Z to Kim to Nas and where you guys all are now, um, you know, what are you most proud of? Um, even Misa, your good friend, um, the who has been the stylist for so many people, um, you know, you were her first big client or whatever. So when you look at where everybody is now, like what what are you most proud of seeing where everybody is today? I'm 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 really proud of everybody's growth and evolution, everybody's um, ability to keep moving and not get stuck and keep growing. You know, Nas is a huge businessman, you know, with a lot going for him. Jay-Z is, you know, same thing. Kim, you know, Misa, you know, she got a lot going for her. We all have a lot going for us. And because we didn't get stuck, we just kept, you got, you got to keep moving no matter what's going on, no matter who's trying to throw you in prison or lie on you or, you know, what embarrassing thing you go through in life. We don't, bar- we don't embarrass easy. <laughs> Kids from the project don't embarrass either. We like, okay, what, what else y'all got? <laughs> and so, you know, just everybody's tough skin, you know, you, you need tough skin and they, you know, everybody evolved nicely. Did you and Lil' Kim ever talk about doing an album together? I don't think so. I don't, maybe. <laughs> I might have- we might have had some drinks. I was like, yeah, girl, we're going to do it. Who knows? <laughs> uh, before I play a game that I play with all my guests uh, with you, um, as you know, one of the things that popped off during the pandemic was versus battles and uh, gave us an opportunity to remember some of the, the, the artists and the music that we love. Um, who, Mary, would you ever do a versus? Well, as of right now, absolutely not, because uh, there's nobody... You know, I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I, don't have time for that. I don't. Yeah, it's it's funny because like you, every time there's a versus, your name always comes up, and everybody tries so hard to figure out who would who could Mary be with in a versus. And the answer is, I don't have one, <laughs> right? I don't have one, and you clearly don't either. I'm sure they probably asked you to do one, right? Yes. <laughs> but you know what? You should do a versus and do my life versus share my world. There's the versus. <laughs> I like that. Mary versus Mary. Yes. Mary versus Mary. That's the only person that could go against well, you is you. Um, all right. Before I get you out of here, it's a game that I play with all my guests. It's called this or that. I give you two options, Mary. You got to pick one. I know. I know. It's just what it is, right? Uh, this is how we get to the, the truth, the hardcore. This is where the controversy starts, right here, Mary. This or that. Um, first up, greens or mac and cheese? Yeah. Oh, man, that's tough. Both. <laughs> you can't say both. You got to pick I one. I can't pick one of those. <laughs> mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Now, can you burn, Mary? No, I, I mean, I can cook, but I can't cook like my mom and I must not get into all of that. Okay. <laughs> Can you make some mac and cheese? Got, got. I can't, <laughs> but my mom and sister can. <laughs> okay, all right, they holding you down. Um, uh, the sun goddess, uh, your your wine. The sun goddess, Pinot Grigio or the Sauvignon Blanc. Pinot Grigio. <laughs> it's strong. It's great. Period. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Period. laughs> Uh, Anita Baker's The Rapture or Anita Baker's The Songstress with, uh, of course, Angel and Feel the Need. Oh, I hate you for this question. I'm not even <laughs> going to ask because I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Too tough. I, I got to pass. <laughs> you got to pass. I can't, I can't answer this question. Well, we know that it was you singing uh, uh it caught up you when you saw in the rap the rapture for Andre Harrell. That's what that's what put you on. Um, by the way, I uh, of course I noticed that you dedicated your documentary to him, um, yes. which was really amazing. Um, 
uh, just quickly, when you think of Andre Harrell, um, like what's your favorite memory of him that comes to mind? Just every time I seen Andre, he was just happy to happy for us, happy to see us. Um, even after we all left uptown, uh, Andre, it was there was nothing that was too much for him. He when we was on Uptown Records, he spent money, he gave us everything we wanted. And 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 then, you know, when he was not on Uptown no more, we would see him, I would run into him. He was just so proud of me, like a father, just proud of everything I did. You know, Mary, I'm so proud of you. You know, you were queen. I told you he was gonna sing for Kings and Queens. And every time I see Andre, he makes me laugh till I cry because he's just funny. Yeah, um, that is an incredible story, man, because uh, it's so much, so much, um, I don't want to call it chance, because I think it was destined to happen. But when uh, you in the documentary, when you told the story about how he discovered you, I was like, man, so much had to go right for that to happen. So, you know, it was from God, right? Because <laughs> so much of that had to go right. Oh, God. Because <laughs> yes, I didn't, yes. I was like, yeah, yeah, if it happens, it happens, because, you know, it don't have things like that didn't happen to people like me. I always I always said that it don't happen to it don't happen to little girls in the project and it did happen. So if you hated me for that question, you're gonna really hate me for this one. Um you mentioned how you felt about Roy Ayers, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. Everybody loves the sunshine or summer madness by cooling the game. You, why are you doing this? <laughs> you're dead wrong for this. I can't even, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I, I listen, <laughs> I do my research, man. I, I know, I know what that's, both of these yeah. songs mean to you. So is that another pass, Mary? Mary, you are the most passionate guest that is done this. <laughs> you know how much I play both those songs equally mm -hmm. now, right now, today? Yeah. I can't pick one. Yeah, and you even uh, you even covered Summer Madness. I remember um, I went to because I've probably seen you more than I've seen oh, any you, artists. <laughs> you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen you tour. more when you were on tour. Yeah, when you did the tour. Like I've seen you more than any other artist by far. Like it's not even close. Wow. I think I've seen you at least six times. So trust me, I, I almost am at the point now. I can do almost every ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes look, listen. I'm gonna put you in the studio when it's time to go on um, go on tour again. I'm gonna put you in the studio. Let you put some backgrounds down. Oh no, no. I can't say I can sing. Oh no, I can't sing. <laughs> Please, your fans are all leave. They're <laughs> like, who is that killing a chicken in the background? Like, what's going on? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm happy to just watch as a consumer because I'm from Detroit. So I saw, I've seen you at Fox. I saw you at Comerica. All mm -hmm. the familiar haunts in in the D. So. Um, I've been there. All right. Well, okay. Since you passed on three of these questions, this last one, you can help settle a debate that me and my husband and I, we revisit this maybe <laughs> every couple of weeks. All right. So he claims that share my world. He feels like that's your best album. I was like, nothing's beating my life. So I'm asking you for the record, you're the artist that did it <laughs> in my life or share my world. Hopefully, I can gloat in his face after this answer. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. Are you serious right now? Mary, Mary, help, help, Mary, help me album. out. Help me out, Mary. Listen, you should have picked some other album, but <laughs> my life and share my world, you should have picked something else. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you to pick, but them two, y'all are both, y'all both. We both right? Yeah, y'all both right. That's that's not a good answer. <laughs> I have to be more right than him, Mary. You know how this goes. <laughs> I got your back, but I can't look. I can't do that. My fans will roast me. <laughs> it's your songs. It's your music. You they still gonna have something to say. She can't. She picked that. <laughs> well. If it makes you feel any better, uh, a couple, I think it was last week, I interviewed Jer Jimmy Jam and, and Terry Lewis, who of course you worked a lot with, and I asked them the same question. And one one of them picked my life and one of them picked Share My World. <laughs> Jimmy picked Share My World, Terry picked my life. I knew you was gonna say that. You did? I, was, I should've asked you, who would, who would you guess? Of course, of course Terry picked um, my life and Jimmy picked Share My World. Terry is, that's all his, elements his colors just terry's a he's real like jimmy jam is you know jimmy jam and you know jimmy jam <laughs> damn it <laughs> so 
Terry going to get into you. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now it makes sense. Okay. Well, Mary, you have successfully survived not only that, but this interview. I know you have a busy day. I thank you for spending this time with me. And I'll, I'll just say this. I, I came into this. My team knows this. Like, this is the most excited I've been for any interview I've ever done. I can tell you that for sure. And uh, when um, I, I can't say exactly why or how the circumstances around it, because I, I've been sworn to secrecy. But when we spent the time in New York, um, I can't tell you how nervous I was that day <laughs> because I was like, holy shit, I'm in a room <laughs> with Mary J. Blige. And it was it, you're you know, little boys grow up with the with the Michael Jordan poster on the wall. Right. That's their dude you were literally my poster on the wall. So I was like, this is the most amazing experience of my professional career. So I thought I would just tell you that and give you your flowers now. Oh, Jamil, I, you know, I was getting ready to blur something, but I'm like, <laughs> but I just want to say you look so beautiful. I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to say nothing, but like, okay, yeah, between me. Yeah. We got it. We got it. And, and uh, uh, it. <laughs> thank you. I, pre <laughs> I appreciate that. People will find out later. And it's just, yeah, it's just amazing because as a reporter, like you just never, and journalists, you never know these experiences you're going to have. I mean, you know, me and my husband, our first song at our wedding that we danced to was I Don't Want to Do Anything. It, it was that, you know, and so, <laughs> yeah, it was it. Yeah, it, the lyrics, a friend of mine got the lyrics put in a frame. It's framed in our house, the lyrics that I don't want to do anything. So oh. see, serious Mary J. Blige fans in this house for sure. But anyway, uh, much success, love. Um, all the good stuff, Mary. Appreciate you spending this time. And for a generation of young women, you have really young, old, a lot of women. Uh, you have meant really everything. So thank you. Thank you, thank you right. so much. All right, um, all right. I'm done fawning. Mary J is getting out of here. Y'all know what's coming up next. Final segment. Fuck it, I'm bothered. <laughs> 